The provisional licensing exam is upon us. I see you, Beach. I just realized it's called the Dagobah Arena. Obvious Star Wars reference there. Test. Please turn your attention to the screen. Right, the rescuing the exam. Arena. What happens next? Imagine taking an exam and acing it, and then being told that there's another exam right at that minute. Wait, does that mean? Imagine if school is set up for students to fail. <laughs> Save the what now? Bystanders. Oh. We learned about them in class, remember? Is this like a special word in Japanese or something? A thought just occurred to me, and maybe this is obvious, it's just sometimes hard to keep up with the, you know, the technicalities of the show. But wouldn't one possible solution be to have the licensing exam be separate from the actual act of hiring heroes? It just occurs to me that it's wrong to have a test based on a quota. You know, it should be based on ability, no? And it doesn't mean the students have to be guaranteed a slot as a government hero employee or whatever, but shouldn't those that are adequate at this job have something that certifies they're adequate at it and those that are not not get that and then later on the government can choose who they want to be professional heroes or not you know what i'm saying they're people at a disaster scene it can also simply i see she went to the Eda school of hand motion street treat this as though it were the real thing right this makes more sense for deku right like this is what he's more in tune with rescuing rather than fighting villains or whatever little kids and old people that's so dangerous why are they here these special yeah, they just live through that persons in need oh, what of the rescue. heck they're very popular introducing the help us company also known as us for short that's cute it's an interesting job we'll be scoring you on a point system if you have more points than the benchmark at the time the exercise comes to an end then you pass the exam. Oh, okay. Well, that seems more reasonable than having a quota. We let the pros handle search and recovery. And you'll recall, there were many casualties. Not this time. <laughs> Rescue exercises. I like how Deku really took that to heart about treating it as if it was the real thing. Gotta listen to this story. It's pretty juicy. What's the rating? Triple X. Good. You got my attention. <laughs> what were you doing while the rest of us were just trying to stay alive? You bastard! This entire test nothing but a joke for you! Guys, cool it! What's going on? Don't play stupid with us! What devious things were you doing <laughs> with that Uber, hottie? This is something that drives me nuts in real life. I hate it when people I'm having a conversation with point to someone who's not in the conversation because it immediately alerts them, alerts them to the fact that you're having a conversation about them. And it's like so much for any kind of discretion or secrecy or sharing of private thoughts. See, she caught you. That's what happened. <laughs> well, at least she's a good sport about it. Actually, I had no idea what was happening and almost failed the test. But you did see her naked? Well, sorta. Don't you lie Thank to us. saw the version of the show that I didn't. Why is she still waving at you? <laughs> you must detail, Midori. Oh no, poor Uraka. She has so much competition, just constantly. I think you met Shishikura in a test. My classmate with the flesh molding power. Yes, Cookie Bro. He has a tendency to try and push his own values onto others. We... we noticed. <laughs> I'd like to build a good relationship between our schools. What's his angle? <laughs> a good relationship. But then there's that guy. Not him, yeah. Not him. You with the collar. Oh. Did oh, I he's getting right at it. you somehow? Well, the thing is, son of Endeavor. Oh, it is Endeavor related. I was about to say. I just can't help but hate both of you. You've changed what did Endeavor do? The first time our paths crossed. Does that mean he and Todoroki have crossed paths, paths or that he and Endeavor have crossed paths? How did Todoroki intuit that? Was it something like deep in his memory or in his subconscious? You're an insatiable, I told you! <laughs> this test isn't over. You need to. Uraka is processing. 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 Still processing. <laughs> and. I don't like this. Jealousy. <laughs> why do I feel so flustered? Yeah, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, did she even know what? She was gonna say she's she's not really there yet. Oh yeah, there's a training exercise. I was kind of wrapped up in all the the romance in the waiting room. We'll work as a team as much as possible. Right. I love how Edith is a natural leader constantly. Why are you damn extras always following me? <laughs> they just wanna. Oh, they just love him so much. My grandpa, he's been crushed. I think he's hurt. Oh no, this looks bad. Where is he? This looks bad. That points off your score. <laughs> what? The first thing you should do Why? is see how bad my injuries are and if I can walk. Should the actors really be giving test advice? Although to this weirdo kid's point, this is bad is sort of like an overused hero thing, isn't it? And simultaneously something that's never necessary. I'll clear a path and make a helicopter landing spot. Watch out! I like how his, uh, his quirk is exactly what you would imagine it to be. 
<laughs> it isn't always, but with him it is. Until the police and firefighters show up, you need to exercise authority and make sure this goes off smoothly. Yeah, right. This is a job. There are many aspects of being a hero, but take note. Anyone who needs rescuing is having the worst day of their lives. And the first thing you said was, this looks bad? <laughs> All right, I'll give, I'll give Weird Boy some credit. It's actually a pretty good lesson, yeah. That's true. Speaking of symbols. All right, well, don't be too hard on yourself. Just learn your lesson and move on. They're essential if I'm going to become a real hero. The kind I want to be. Steps toward achieving my dream. <laughs> that face, though. What about Grandpa? Where's Grandpa this whole time? Definitely save him. I can carry this boy to the first You don't want to make promises, myself. though. I, all right, there's a long way to go. <laughs> there's a lot to... Lots to learn in this profession. It's tricky coming into a show like this, and I guess also this is part of the function of what the show is, is that you know you have your idea of what superheroes are or what heroes are in general. But the show has sort of an interesting take on it in a number of ways. This is a career, and there's some weird blurred lines there. They're not like Superman type figures or Batman type figures, for example. They have bosses, presumably, or at least codes of conduct they have to follow in order to have the title heroes, right? Like there's there's different aspects of it. Like they just said, it's their actions, but also the fact that it's a legal definition as well, it seems. But for Deku, there's no shame at all for falling into that that kind of trope. You know, I feel like that's how it goes with just about any job or anything you imagine yourself doing. You sort of can't know what something is until you do it, right? And a lot of the times you end up doing the things you think the job is without any real critical thinking. You sort of go through the motions you think are expected or the motions you have previously associated with that position. But I think what usually sets apart people who are just, you know, adequate at what they do from people who become really transcendent and great what they do is they take such a deep interest in it they start to question everything and what it means to them personally and tinker with their own personal relationship with whatever their endeavor is in just about any pursuit there are things that emerge as solutions to problems but then those solutions become sort of codified and it gets taken for granted that those are just the methods by which something is done and people get really attached to those things but i think being more goal-oriented and then being flexible as to the methods by which the goal can be attained often leads to some really great insights about what things can be dispensed with and what is truly important. And you can't know that until you know it. It's just a process of actually doing the thing, which is why I experience is such an important element of the teaching process. And so that started as what seemed like a parody of the whole, like, this looks bad hero thing, but actually was a great lesson for Deku. What is he really aiming for? He's not aiming to be a hero trope. Go on without me. All right. Let's do this. So it's yeah. leadership abilities. Be Processing. <laughs> Processing. I promise I will. The hug guy is still criticizing him. Still processing. She seems so lost. <laughs> is it? Because Ayama was on it long ago. Ayama was the first one. Let's not forget that. I've got to push these feelings down. At least she knows what's going on. His all to reach his goal. No room for anything else. Oof, that's tough, man. That's really tough. I'll put these feelings away. I'll focus on working just as hard as he does and reach my dream that's tricky though i got a lot of weird mixed feelings about this but i guess first to give uraga some credit i actually have been thinking a lot about this recently just because as some of you probably know i've been having somewhat of a, a similar or related experience and it really can be terrifying you know because it really can grab you like i consider myself to be someone who can navigate life pretty pretty comfortably i have confidence in myself to typically do the right thing for myself in the long run but there were moments recently where i really felt like i i just was a leaf in the wind you know it's just my heart wanted what it wanted and i was just trying to keep everything going while i pursued that interest and it's really tough because that situation is, is just generally volatile so like the lows make it tough to focus on anything else because of how distraught you might become but then also the highs make it tough to focus on anything else because the highs feel so good it's like why focus on anything else you know i'm someone who is largely motivated by my visions and my dreams and the clarity with which i can imagine the internal reward from from achieving my goals and in moments of extreme attraction let's say it's hard to be motivated by those feelings in the same way because i have something in hand right now that feels that good so it's not something to be taken lightly and you know if i'm being perfectly honest there were moments where i thought i wish i had never started this but then on the other side there's a whole bunch of reasons why i think this is ultimately not the right way to think about it like i said if you're really in deep you're in deep and there's only so much you can will yourself out of these situations especially if and this is sort of my next point you're depriving yourself of something you really need i mean you can do that you know one thing i learned from the whole like being inside for a very long time situation is that I actually do have a lot more discipline than I than I thought I had. Like I really just did YouTube for a solid year or so, year and a half maybe, with pretty much no socialization, no romance, and 
I actually was able to do that. But the caveat is I also wasn't because it was eating away at me. And so things came out in weird ways. And one of the weird ways it came out was with this situation and the intense desire I had to pursue it. You know, it's sort of like the floodgates opened. And the only reason there was a problem to begin with is because I was suppressing what I really needed, which doesn't mean that Uraka has to take Deku, but it means that this is something to pay attention to. It's not like you can just will yourself into focusing on career for forever or whatever. Additionally, it's my strong opinion that framing it about being good for someone else is usually not the right approach. It's not her role to say what's good for Deku ultimately. That's Deku's role. And the risk of thinking this way is she might end up depriving both of them of what could be a really amazing experience. You know, these are things that are rare. If life is only about the strategic, you know, it's only about this is what I want and these are the, you know, the ABC steps I, I can take to get there. Are you not following those ABC steps because you're hoping for something really magical to happen? But isn't there something magical right in front of you right now? You know, aren't both important? Like, isn't following your heart important and also strategizing for a long-term success so that you can get what you want important? Back to my story, I feel like I would have really missed out had I not had this experience. You know, this has been one of the most interesting and exciting mini adventures I've ever had. And that was true despite moments of extreme terror, extreme disruption, and really severe lows. Good luck to you, Ochaka Uraka. It's been 10 minutes since we started. Everyone's doing well for the most part, but there's still a ways to go. What's a test without a few surprises? Well, at least he's not, you know, just falling I asleep. They didn't think this is somewhat more interesting. That's a good point. It's not usually going to be just rescue, right? It's going to be rescue with other stuff. <laughs> Great job, Alex. Very well articulated, as always. Gale Force! Gale Force. Rescue exercises get me pumped up! <laughs> These actors are so old. You're going to be safe with me! They're just waiting for their next cigarette break. When day, <laughs> I like this old man. Like a <laughs> as a baby. First. But in reality, he's manipulating countless airstreams to adapt to all the people and debris he's moving. That's a high level of mastery right there. So this is their, their teacher? Did I get that right? Kami ran off again. What's her deal lately? Oh, you know, she's just gonna be off somewhere, naked, asking people about their inner desires and fears. Seems to me you've taken Stain's words to heart. Yeah, yeah. What he told wasn't necessarily all bad. This guy gets it, yeah. There are many who wish to reform the role that heroes play in society. But if negativity and hate take over, they can impair your judgment and keep you from your potential. I don't remember who this guy is, but he's on it. It's rare that any side that catches on or gains momentum doesn't have some element of truth to it. But then what happens next is really important. There's an incentive for us to sort of streamline everything into a very, very simplistic picture that justifies other terrible things. Or doesn't account for the reason why those problems exist. Sometimes new problems emerge as sort of side effects of solutions we've come up with to even worse problems. You know, it's like things can never be exactly perfect. Everything has consequences. And it's easy to look at the problems in a vacuum and say that those things are of paramount importance and we must do everything at all costs to eliminate those problems before we understand why those problems are there in the first place. They may just be a trade-off for an even greater threat that we, we wouldn't want to return to. And it doesn't have to be one or the other, right? It doesn't have to be extreme gratitude and everything's fine or everything's terrible and we got to tear it all down. Instead, both of those things should be accounted for simultaneously. So with the stain thing, it's definitely not let's kill all people who are not perfect, right? There's a reason we got to this kind of hero setup in the first place. So it's not about dismantling the whole thing by brute force and violence. You respect what you have and then you try to address problems in a controlled manner so that you don't bring the whole thing down. There's someone in here, but they're not responding when I yell. Have you tried yelling, this looks bad? That seems to get a response. First, let's use the support beam to prop up this wall. It'll take some time to get everything into place though. Yeah, Momo's like a, a true engineer in quirk and at heart. Come to think of it, they're really asking a lot of these kids, uh, these heroes in general. They just gotta be good at everything. If someone tries to do everything themselves, they really gotta be equipped to do everything. In the long run. And improvise simultaneously with what quirks people have. Focusing on your role during a test where you're trying to stand out takes courage. It's something you can only do if you really understand the situation. Right, I feel like that's probably the, the biggest grading criteria. If they keep going like this, we won't be able to grant them licenses. This isn't good. Until Mineta steps up, that is. This is my boy's day. <laughs> Finally. Please have a day. Uh, just have one. I'll join you. Me too. Nice. I like that. Guys, oh, work she's together? there. I like that Todoroki is joining this time. Depending on the situation, we should also work together with other schools. That's how we'll save lives. I love this right. transformation of Ido from exam to Did exam. You say it was too dark in there. Hey, look who it is. Allow my twinkling to save the day. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, give the man some credit. He does one thing and he does it really well. Ida taught him a great lesson in a very short time. Sarah, tape him up! I got him. Tape fixes everything, am I right? <laughs> is there anything that can't be taped? 
Nope, there isn't. So I was going to say I love the parallel there between the first exam we saw for UA with Ida and now. Like, no character development is wasted in the show. And I remember there was a moment where he's looking at Deku and being surprised that Deku is doing something that is just for the good. You know, it's not based on the criteria of the exam. And here we are, a full, like, what, semester later, basically? Ida has noticed that and addressed it and is now playing a leadership role in that very thing. Although in this case, it seems like it actually will, will help them. It seems like that's actually what they're being tested for, which is kind of cool. My arm hurts pretty bad. <laughs> Mine too. Save Underwhelming problems. Up. Yeah, Save I'm with Bakugo on this one. Ah! Man, you've got to work on your rescue style. It might be really No, hurt. but he's right. There could be other people who are here. more hurt. Wait, Pass Bakugo. We are supposed to be low priority victims yeah. with only minor injuries. Exactly. So you think that he figured it out? <laughs> it just happened to be the right match. He would have done it no matter what, but... His tone was wildly inappropriate. Minus points. That, that's tough for me. As someone who, you know, just wants to get things done towards a goal, what does it matter? Todoroki! Sue you! Over there! Help! But then I'm guessing there are going to be swim. villains arriving, right? Be right there. Orca man? Is that what I saw? Take him to the space over there on the right. Yes, ma'am. Good. What is with... What, what is with these hug people? They're so bizarre and, and smug. It. Let's see. During their initial response, there was some poor judgment. Poor judgment among high school students? I'm shocked. Explosions? What? Wait. And now the third secret part of the exam begins. It's just unfair. It's cruel. It's the stuff of, of school nightmares. Hidden exam within a hidden exam. Yeah, it is Orca, dude. Gang Orca. Gang Orca fought alongside Endeavor and Best Chinist. Yep. Is he okay? I mean... Has he had counseling? Has anyone asked that? He's also ranked third in the list of heroes who look as though they should be villains. He also is number one in terms of like, looking like an awesome orca. <laughs> he looks cool is what I'm saying. I love it. Help or run away. What would a hero do? <laughs> that face just says it all. All I can say is that this is some of the most devious test preparation of all time. Hiding an exam within an exam after an exam should be illegal, speaking of law. This is the classic question of who watches the Watchmen, you know what I mean? Like, can we trust these examiners to create the best hero society when they're this devious? Am I talking out of school? Seems patently unheroic, but still some cool stuff happening in this episode. Some of it's somewhat surprising for Deku, you know, like the moment where he gets criticized for his, his showing up line. That's a pretty good use, I'd say, of what seems like a hero trope, you know, oh, this looks bad or whatever, only to have that retargeted back towards thinking bigger, you know, thinking better about what he actually wants to be as a hero. And then just some weird coloring about what heroism is in this world, you know, it's not exactly what you might think. It takes a while to sort of get into the, the structure of the hero society that the show is setting up. It's not just the actions they take and being strong or courageous, it's also fitting in with a very specific set of expectations run by a bureaucracy, which like, yeah, there's going to be some issues there, of course, right? I mean, I'm just joking about the who watches the Watchmen thing, but seriously, who watches the Watchmen? Who gets to decide? And there are a handful of really short but really nice moments, like Ida's total transformation, you know, from episode one or two or whatever to now. Certain characters really stepping up, including Todoroki, who weirdly, just by his act of joining the group and being cooperative, seems to have made some some huge strides. So it's pretty cool to see, and it will be very interesting to see how they how they deal with Gang Orca. There are definitely gonna be some great episodes there. But that's it for now, I'll see you guys next time when Mineta is the, the surprising hero against Gang Orca.